So in this video, we're going to look at soft cloth within Unreal. So for this video, all you need is Unreal Engine 4. And in your Epic Games, if you go to Unreal Engine and the Learn tab, you scroll down a little bit, you'll find the content examples. Click on content examples and create a project. After you created the project, if you go to maps and you look for cloth, you can open up the cloth map and it will bring you to this map. Now in this video, we're going to look at creating weight maps within the skeletal mesh editor inside of Unreal. We're not going to touch the NV cloth by NVIDIA because it seems to be a bit of an outdated uh, process. So the reason why I'm talking about this map is because right here you have these different uh, cloth simulations with different settings. And later on, we can come here and copy some of the settings on these different simulations onto our own character. Here we have a character that has this simulation applied to his clothes. You can see how it moves using these blendable animations. This method is the preferable method if you're using cloth simulation on a character, a playable character. Now on an NPC character you can use something a bit more accurate and we're gonna see that in later videos. But when you have blendables like this, which is blending one animation to the other, it's great to use this dynamic system because the blending is happen happening inside of Unreal Engine. And so so if you're using a system where you are baking your animations, you'd have to create every blend for uh, outside of Unreal Engine and that would take a long time. So this is the best method for dynamic uh, cloth animations. And let's look at it and see how we can apply this to our own characters. And before I do that, you you can also investigate this guy here. If I browse to asset and let's just open up the blueprint. If I press mesh here and I press this magnifying glass, it will take me to the mesh. And if I open the mesh, I can see the clothing tab and I can investigate how this was painted and you can do that by yourself and see how it was painted and its physics assets asset and how that is set up. So I'm, I'm going to do this on a personal character, um, actually show you how I did this on a personal character. Before we move on, I want to show you the wireframe on this. You get really good results as you've seen uh, when you have a lot of vertices density. This is very dense as you can see. If we look at our character here, our character is not as dense uh, vertice-wise as those cloths. The bigger the density, the, the better uh, the result, but still if you want to do this on a character which has a lot of cloth, you have to keep in mind that uh, really big density is going to create a character with a lot of polygons. Uh, with a lot of vertices and you might not want that. So you kind of have to sacrifice one for the other. So here I have a custom character uh, imported into Unreal Engine. And I specifically selected this character uh, because there is a problem with this wireframe here. As you can see here in the wireframe, it's a bit hard to see, but you can see that the mesh for his clothes has problem right here in the center. Uh, by problem, I mean that the density is not equally distributed. The um, spacing between between the pixels, between the vertices, I mean, is not equally distri distributed, especially here in the center. If you want a good simulation, you want to have even spacing throughout your map. I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to show you how to simulate and you'll see what I mean as this is going to cause some issue. Now, I believe what happened here is when the character was, when the character was created and the cloth applied to it and the skin weights applied to the cloth, he was in a T pose. His legs were closed. And when I imported it into Unreal, it, I imported it with an A pose. And because the, the, it had skin weights applied to the clothes, when he opened up his legs a little bit, he created that issue in the middle of that cloth. So it's something to keep in mind. Make sure that the wireframe shows you an evenly distributed vertice. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is, if you don't already have the clothing uh, tab open, you have to go to Window and click on Clothing. And then you'll have uh, the Clothing tab here. Now I already have a clothing asset here. There's my mask down there. But it's not applied 
to my clothes. So I'm going to show you how you can create one. So if I go into section selection so that I can select different parts of my character here, otherwise it's just going to select the skeleton bones. And I go into create clothing data from section. I can rename my asset name. This is going to be a new asset and I can choose my physics asset. Usually you just if you already have a physics asset for the mesh, it will automatically select it. So if I press create, now there's a new asset here. But this asset is not applied to the clove yet. We need to apply it. If I right click and I choose apply clothing asset, I can choose my new asset and click on it and it will be applied. One thing to keep in mind is you don't need to apply it right away. You can first paint on it and then apply it. And that will make the painting process faster when the when it's not applied. But of course, you can't really see as the simulation if it's not applied. So I am going to apply it right now for simplicity's sake. I'm going to press activate cloth painting. And you can see that th this is my other asset. And this is the new asset. You can see the problem in this area here. This is, is going to create a few problems in the simulation. Still, I'm going to show you how you can achieve this, how you can paint it. You have the, the settings down here. You can have different tools like brush, gradient, smooth and fill. We're mainly going to look at brush here. And then the radius. Usually the radius comes at 128. A little bit big. <laughs> so I like a radius of 8. If your radius is really low, uh, you might miss out some vertices. So a radius of 8 usually works for me. Uh, you can see what, what works for you. Now paint value is 100. Uh, this is, has to do with density. Usually if you go to 100 and you start painting, you get this white area. This means that this white area is going to be simulated. The pink area is not going to be simulated. Now you also have the brush strength and it's usually set to half uh, 0.5. If I go down to zero here in the paint value and I start painting, it gives me black. But if I keep painting on this area, it starts coming as pink again. And if I increase my strength to 1, it will paint pink right away. I like to keep it at 0 0.5 and let's just paint a value of 100 down here. Basically, what is pink will still have skin weight applied to it and what's white will not. If we simulate this, if we press H, we can see the simulation happening. Pressing and holding H on the keyboard you get the simulation happening there. If I press deactivate the cloth, you can also see the simulation going on. And if you if you come here to your previous scene, you can select an animation if you have an animation for your character and we can see how it looks. Okay, there's some protrusion over there on his right leg and on his left leg as well. Obviously, we can improve this by creating a transition between the pink area and the um, white area. The simulated and not simulated area. If we go here to uh, our smooth, then use this tool setting smooth mesh. This is the amount of smooth you want. So if I press smooth mesh, it will smooth between the two areas and we can get a, a bit of a better result. You can also go into your paint and then reduce the value. Go into your brush and reduce the value a little bit and you can paint in your own transition. Right, let's look at why that is happening. And why that is happening is if I go into my physics asset, my physics is what's gonna determine what will make the cloth move. You can see that these capsules here, uh, they are the ones responsible for moving the cloth. I push this capsule up a bit front a little bit, to the front a little bit, and you can, by pressing spacebar, you can rotate them and scale them. Now if I save my physics asset and then go back here, something to keep in mind, you might want to turn it on and off again, and let's see our animation. So still a, a, bit of a, a bit of a problem there, so if I go here and I rotate these guys. So this is what's what's making it possible. The physics asset is what making it possible for this to move. So if I activate and deactivate, now there's no more protrusion there. It's a bit better. So I can keep arranging it and pushing it forward a little bit and making that uh, work a, a bit better. You can also look at your capsules while you're looking at the animation. If you go to character uh, clothing and turn on collisions, you can see what your capsules are actually doing. This creates an asset, a physics asset here, and it creates a mask. 
So this is like a, a weight a weight map this mask here. Now you can come here after you're happy with the simulation that you have. We can come here and improve uh, the simulation by using the cloth config settings. Now the cloth config settings, this is why I open up um, the content examples. If I go into content examples, I go into these cloths here and I select one that I like. And for example, this one over here is more leathery type. It's not too stretchy. So I like this one. I can right click and I can go and edit. And this is the one I click on its asset and I get the cloth config down here. So if I right click here where it says cloth config and I just choose copy. Now I go back to my project and there's cloth config here. If I right click on this and paste, now I have the configuration, the same configuration applied to my mesh. At any point I can remove my clothing data and I can apply a different clothing data. So this is the, the previous one that I had. It's a bit more stretchy and you can see because I made it a bit more stretchy, you can see the problem uh, that we're having because of the skin weights that I talked in the beginning of the video. The spacing of the vertices wasn't right here in the center. If I look at my wireframe, you can see the stretching there on the wireframe. It's terrible. So you have to keep that in mind. If this was a garment that was closed all around the character and it was going all the way to his feet, uh, this kind of simulation would probably suck. It would probably not be ideal. And that's why we're looking at bake baked animation later on. So I'll see you in the next video.